but something about it was bothering me and this morning I thought no I'm gonna change it to keeping God first you know why how many times do we decide to put God first <laughs> but then the keeping him first becomes an issue because in case you haven't noticed the world is full of things to distract us I'm sure you've experienced you make a decision that you're going to pray every morning and study the word before you do anything else and man all of a sudden it's nighttime and you don't even know what happened but that plan you made didn't work out and so more than anything now I want you to listen to me more than anything the devil will fight you about keeping God first in your time in your finances and in many 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 different ways and so I feel like the Lord wants me to talk to you this morning about keeping God first and for some of you it may require making some adjustments you see here's the thing that you don't want to do I found myself many years ago trying so hard to work God into my schedule and finally one day the Lord said why don't you just work your schedule around me So are you trying to find a place to put God into your schedule <laughs> or would you be willing today to say God from now on you're gonna be first and I don't care what else has to go I don't care what else has to go or what I have to change what I have to make an adjustment in I want to keep you first in my life in everything let me tell you being a Christian just does not work out right if God is a sideline in your life and I you know that's probably not the case with a lot of you because you wouldn't have taken the trouble to come out here on a Saturday morning but I'm not just talking to you today we're talking to millions of people all over the world through this wonderful technology today that we have called television and I'm well aware that there are people who think you accidentally turned the program on but it could be a life-changing moment for you today there are also probably millions of people that I refer to like I used to refer to myself as a religious person well Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion he died so we could have a deep intimate personal relationship with him through Christ we need to learn how to do life with God he doesn't want to just be part of your Sunday morning he wants to be welcomed into and be a vital part of everything that you do hmm. okay then millions of people believe in Jesus and go to church on Sunday but God is not first in their life and I want to tell you that he is a jealous God <laughs> he's jealous of you he puts you first in his life do you know that every single one of you is first in God's thoughts you say well how could we all be first because God is God and he can do that and so everything I'm saying today is not just to a bunch of people it's to individuals and once Jesus died on the cross and ascended on high he sent the Holy Spirit who can be everywhere all the time with every person so God is omnipresent he's here today but he's also in China and Africa and India and Asia and, and he can speak something different to every one of you all at the same time people will come to these conferences and tell me things they got out of it and I don't even remember saying that but see God can speak to you and I want you to understand this today you are on God's mind all the time you are on God's mind all the time he's always thinking about you we could not even count the thoughts that God has toward us they would be like little grains of sand on the beach before you ever arrived on planet earth God made a plan for every single day of your life he won't force you to walk in it but he would like you to walk in it <laughs> he would like to guide you and lead you through life 
and literally, let me say it again, be involved in everything you do. In every decision you make, God wants to be part of it. That's what Jesus died for us to have. Not just believe a certain doctrine, join a certain group, and go to church once a week, and hope we go to heaven when we die. That's pretty sad if that's all being a Christian means to us. So I want to talk to you for a moment about the importance of remembering the things that God has done for you. There's some great warnings in the Bible about the dangers of forgetting God. And really exactly what's wrong with our nation right now is not a money problem, it's a moral problem. If the morals are right, the money will be there. And I don't care how many panels of experts they put together to study the problems, they are not going to find the answers because the answer is simply repent of your sins and return to God. And to be honest, in most of our lives, that's the bottom line answer. Quit trying to do what you want to do and start doing what I'm asking you to do. America was built on the foundational principles of the Word of God. All of our laws are built on the Word of God. And you cannot remove God from a nation that was built on God and expect the nation to last and to work. Israel did that over and over and over and over. And God is gracious and he always received them back. But they would do the same dumb thing again and again. And every time they did, they had war, they had famine, they had all kinds of problems in their life. I don't know why anybody would not be able to see what is going on. And I think one of the things we need to pray is that the, that the blind will see and the deaf will hear. And I'm not talking physically. I'm talking about the blindness that's on our leaders that prevents them from seeing what the real problem is. All you have to do is look back to when they took the Ten Commandments off the walls in the schools. And it's been a... <laughs> well, you know, we can all sit and say, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, you know, we're not responsible for what everybody does. We are responsible for what we do. Amen. Amen. I read this morning about a group of mothers. I can't remember exactly where it was, so I won't tell it wrong. But they started a Jesus lunch off campus in a park nearby a school. And uh, the kids go to McDonald's and nobody cares. School don't get involved in that. Government doesn't get involved if you want to go eat at McDonald's. Well, these mothers started a nice home-cooked lunch for any student who wanted to come and eat lunch there, and they present a simple message of Christianity, and they feed the kids. Well, there's now 500 kids voluntarily coming to this. So now they're getting threatened. They're being told they have to stop it, that they can't do it. And thank God these women are fighting and they've gotten a lawyer that will help them fight. So we cannot just kind of lay down under this and say, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, we need to get stirred up and say, we have got a right to talk about God as much as we want to talk about God. Now, I agree that this is a free country and we can't make people believe anything. And I don't personally think we should try to push off on anybody what we believe. But we should not let them take away what we believe. To be honest, it seems like today everybody's got rights but Christians. But everything that's going on in this country and many other countries around the world is because they have forgotten God. Boy, we sure need God when we're desperate. Well, you know, we can't just go to God when we're desperate. That's not a walk with God. Deuteronomy 8, 19, and 20. I figure we might as well go out with a bang today, amen? 
And if you forget the Lord your God, listen, I don't want to forget God any day of my life. Now, you know, you grow in your walk with God, and I'm going to tell you a few things about my life, I'm not doing any of it to brag, just as an example to you. I will not put my feet on the floor in the morning until I talk to God. I don't want to do that. I need him to get up and walk across the room. And you will too when you get old enough. Come on, Deuteronomy 8, 19. And if you forget the Lord your God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. Now, you know, we think sometimes other gods is like being in some kind of false religion or bowing down to a, a statue of an idol. But let me tell you something. We can turn anything into a God in our life. Because anything that we make more important than God becomes an idol to us. You can let the building of a house come before God. Matter of fact, I know a man, him and his wife were building a home and he was very involved. He was a general contractor. And so in addition to his job, he was spending every waking moment with this house. During the building of that, he didn't have time to go to church. And it ended up causing some tremendous problems in his relationship with God, he ended up getting involved with another woman at work and got a divorce. We cannot afford to take a vacation from God. Amen. I know another woman who had this tremendous intercessory prayer. something about it was bothering me and this morning I thought no I'm gonna change it to keeping God first you know why how many times do we decide to put God first 
But then the keeping him first becomes an issue because in case you haven't noticed, the world is full of things to distract us. Yeah. I'm sure you've experienced, you make a decision that you're going to pray every morning and study the word before you do anything else. And man, all of a sudden it's nighttime and you don't even know what happened, but that plan you made didn't work out. And so more than anything, now I want you to listen to me, more than anything, the devil will fight you about keeping God first in your time, in your finances, and in many, many, many different ways. And so I feel like the Lord wants me to talk to you this morning about keeping God first. And for some of you, it may require making some adjustments. You see, here's the thing that you don't want to do. I found myself many years ago trying so hard to work God into my schedule. And finally one day the Lord said, why don't you just work your schedule around me? So are you trying to find a place to put God into your schedule? <laughs> or would you be willing today to say, God, from now on, you're going to be first, and I don't care what else has to go. I don't care what else has to go or what I have to change, what I have to make an adjustment in. I want to keep you first in my life in everything. Let me tell you, being a Christian just does not work out right if God is a sideline in your life. And I, you know, that's probably not the case with a lot of you because you wouldn't have taken the trouble to come out here on a Saturday morning. But I'm not just talking to you today. We're talking to millions of people all over the world through this wonderful technology today that we have called television. And I'm well aware that there are people who think you accidentally turned the program on, but it could be a life-changing moment for you today. There are also probably millions of people that I refer to, like I used to refer to myself as a religious person. Well, Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion. He died so we could have a deep, intimate, personal relationship with him through Christ. We need to learn how to do life with God. He doesn't want to just be part of your Sunday morning. He wants to be welcomed into and be a vital part of everything that you do. Hmm. Okay, then. Millions of people believe in Jesus and go to church on Sunday. But God is not first in their life. And I want to tell you that he is a jealous God. <laughs> He's jealous of you. He puts you first in his life. Do you know that? Every single one of you is first in God's thoughts. You say, well, how could we all be first? Because God is God. And he can do that. And so everything I'm saying today is not just to a bunch of people. It's to individuals and once Jesus died on the cross and ascended on high, he sent the Holy Spirit who can be everywhere all the time with every person. So God is omnipresent. He's here today, but he's also in China and Africa and India and Asia. And, and he can speak something different to every one of you all at the same time. People will come to these conferences and tell me things they got out of it, and I don't even remember saying that. But see, God can speak to you. And I want you to understand this today. You are on God's mind all the time. You are on God's mind all the time. He's always thinking about you. We could not even count the thoughts that God has toward us. They would be like little grains of sand on the beach. Before you ever arrived on planet Earth, God made a plan for every single day of your life. He won't force you to walk in it, but he would like you to walk in it. <laughs> he would like to guide you and lead you through life. And literally, let me say it again, be involved in everything you do. In every decision you make, God wants to be part of it.
that's what Jesus died for us to have not just believe a certain doctrine join a certain group and go to church once a week and hope we go to heaven when we die that's pretty sad if that's all being a Christian means to us so I want to talk to you for a moment about the importance of remembering the things that God has done for you there's some great warnings in the Bible about the dangers of forgetting God and really exactly what's wrong with our nation right now it's not a money problem it's a moral problem if the morals are right the money will be there and I don't care how many panels of experts they put together to study the problems they are not going to find the answers because the answer is simply repent of your sins and return to God and to be honest in most of our lives that's the bottom line answer quit trying to do what you want to do and start doing what I'm asking you to do America was built on the foundational principles of the Word of God all of our laws are built on the Word of God and you cannot remove God from a nation that was built on God and expect the nation to last and to work Israel did that over and over and over and over and God is gracious and he always received them back but they would do the same dumb thing again and again and every time they did they had war they had famine they had all kinds of problems in their life I don't know why anybody would not be able to see what is going on and I think one of the things we need to pray is that the that the blind will see and the deaf will hear and I'm not talking physically I'm talking about the blindness that's on our leaders that prevents them from seeing what the real problem is all you have to do is look back to when they took the Ten Commandments off the walls in the schools and it's been a <laughs> well you know we can all sit and say well I don't know what to do I don't know what to do well you know we're not responsible for what everybody does what we are responsible for what we do amen. amen I read this morning about a group of mothers I can't remember exactly where it was so I won't tell it wrong but they started a Jesus lunch off campus in a park nearby a school and uh, the kids go to McDonald's and nobody cares school don't get involved in that government doesn't get involved if you want to go eat at McDonald's well these mothers started a nice home-cooked lunch for any student who wanted to come and eat lunch there and they present a simple message of Christianity and they feed the kids well there's now 500 kids voluntarily coming to this so now they're getting threatened they're being told they have to stop it that they can't do it and thank God these women are fighting and they've gotten a lawyer that will help them fight so we cannot just kind of lay down under this and say well, I don't know what to do I mean we need to get stirred up and say we have got a right to talk about God as much as we want to talk about God now I agree that this is a free country and we can't make people believe anything and I don't personally think we should try to push off on anybody what we believe but we should not let them take away what we believe to be honest it seems like today everybody's got rights but Christians but everything that's going on in this country and many other countries around the world is because they have forgotten God Boy, we sure need God when we're desperate well you know we can't just go to God when we're desperate that's not a walk with God Deuteronomy 8 19 and 20 I figure we might as go out with a bang today amen and if you forget the Lord your God listen I don't want to forget God any day of my life 
Now, you know, you grow in your walk with God, and I'm going to tell you a few things about my life, not doing any of it to brag, just as an example to you. I will not put my feet on the floor in the morning until I talk to God. I don't want to do that. I need him to get up and walk across the room. And you will too when you get old enough. Come on, Deuteronomy 8, 19. And if you forget the Lord your God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. Now, you know, we think sometimes other gods is like being in some kind of false religion or bowing down to a, a statue of an idol. But let me tell you something. We can turn anything into a god in our life. Because anything that we make more important than God becomes an idol to us. You can let the building of a house come before God. Matter of fact, I know a man, him and his wife were building a home and he was very involved. He was a general contractor. And so in addition to his job, he was spending every waking moment with this house. During the building of that, he didn't have time to go to church. And it ended up causing some tremendous problems in his relationship with God, he ended up getting involved with another woman at work and got a divorce. We cannot afford to take a vacation from God. Amen. I know another woman who had this tremendous intercessory prayer.